I recently investigated one of the biggest companies in the world, Pepsi, a company whose products find their way into the hands of both kids and adults in over 200 countries around the world. Unfortunately, Pepsi also has a record of racism and abuse and a marketing team that's ruined thousands of lives. And all the while, it rakes in billions of dollars every year. While you may know them for their memorable commercials featuring celebrities like Beyonce, Britney Spears and Mariah Carey, there's an ugly side to them that you'll never see unless you look beyond the superficial marketing. So it's time to take a deep dive into one of the most popular and most destructive companies in the world. And there's no better place to start than 1992, when Pepsi's desire to be number one caused irrevocable harm to a country that was just emerging from years of oppression. It's time to find out exactly why Pepsi can never be trusted. This first disaster hit the Philippines like a typhoon. In order to increase their market share against rivals Coca-Cola, Pepsi introduced a promotion called Number Fever. The way it worked is they printed a three digit number on the underside of every Pepsi bottle cap. Every night, there'd then be a televised drawing in which the winning number was announced. If you held the winning number, you could win up to 1 million pesos. That was about 611 times the monthly average income for Filipinos. In other words, that was a lot of money, a life-changing amount. And in a population with such a high level of poverty, it's no surprise that this promotion caused a frenzy. A frenzy that some refer to as number fever. Every day, tens of thousands of Filipinos would chance their luck trying to get their hands on a winning bottle cap. There were stories of how families would skip meals in order to put their money into buying more Pepsi bottles. Some families would pull together to have added resources to buy more bottles. The frenzy got so wild that a maid was sent to jail when her employer accused her of stealing their winning bottle cap. Pepsi's marketing team, meanwhile, must have been patting themselves on the back. With all of this enthusiasm created by the promotion, Pepsi's market share in the 62 million person country jumped from 19% to 25%. But that would all change, literally overnight, when a computer error led to the wrong number being chosen. You see, instead of two winning bottle caps being drawn that evening, there were as many as 800,000 winners. The consequences of this mistake would soon become lethal. Now, one question that came to mind as I investigated the tragedy that would soon unfold is whether or not this was truly Pepsi's fault. After all, could they really have foreseen a computer glitch? Well, I did some digging. What I found gives us a clue into just how irresponsible this marketing campaign really was. You see, the same year that Pepsi rolled out the promotion in the Philippines, they'd also introduced it in Chile. There, a problem with their fax machines had led to another wrong number being chosen, which led to riots in the streets by angry Chileans. So despite Pepsi's earlier experience in Chile, they apparently did nothing to safeguard against something similar happening once again. And the consequences were devastating. On the evening of May 25th, 1992, as soon as the winning number was announced, thousands of Filipinos began celebrating in their homes, all under the impression that they'd just won the grand prize, that their lives would change forever. Imagine the joy of one bus driver who had three winning caps, each worth 1 million pesos. Or how about the mother of 12 who nearly fainted when she counted up all of her winning bottle caps and realized she was worth 35 million pesos. Before long, a crowd of delighted Filipinos descended on the Pepsi plant, all eager to claim their money. What did Pepsi do? First, they tried to call a different number. When that didn't work, they offered a token compensation of about $18. Some people accepted that compensation, but others took to the streets in anger. The protests raged on for months, the anger boiling over into violence. In the year following the draw, 37 Pepsi trucks were attacked. 
A bomb was thrown into the Pepsi plant, killing three employees. Pepsi hired bodyguards for its people and sent its non-Filipino employees out of the country. But sadly, it was the Filipinos themselves who suffered the worst. The most tragic event that I uncovered in this whole debacle was when someone rolled a grenade under a Pepsi truck. The grenade sadly killed a school teacher and her five-year-old child also injuring six others. Despite all of the damage that Pepsi's marketing ploy inflicted, they were never punished for their actions. In 2006, the Philippine Supreme Court finally decided that Pepsi weren't criminally liable for the computer error. And that was that. For many Filipinos, the memories of number fever are still raw. Many refuse to ever drink Pepsi again. But it's not just in the Philippines where people have been hurt by Pepsi. You can look a lot closer to home. Pepsi has a special talent of making enemies right at home in the United States. The most recent example of this was during the Black Lives Matter movement. I've got to hand it to Pepsi, they really do have a talent for pissing people off. You may or may not remember this advert featuring Kendall Jenner of Kardashian fame. In the ad, Kendall can be seen stepping towards a line of police during a protest and then handing one a can of Pepsi. The police officer smiles and all seems well. But outside of the commercial, all was not well, especially if you saw the comments on social media that followed. The fact that in the commercial, the conflict between the protesters and the police evaporated just because of a can of soda was an insult to many activists who know firsthand the kinds of sacrifices that have been made in the name of social justice. As one former Black Lives Matter organizer put it, quote, no one is finding joy from Pepsi at a protest. That's just not the reality of our lives. It turns out that Pepsi has a history of tapping into racial issues in their ads. Back in the 1940s, they hired an all-black marketing team because they wanted to break into the African-American market. In an age where segregation was still formalized, this was actually a progressive and risky move. But if there was any doubt that this was a decision based on profit rather than morals, all doubts disappeared a few years later when the fear of losing white customers caused Pepsi to drop the campaign. It also didn't help that the supposedly forward-thinking man whose idea it was in the first place reportedly used a racial slur to describe the drink in one of his meetings. But here's the thing, it's not just groups of people that Pepsi exploits for profit. Even celebrities aren't immune. In 1984, they hired Michael Jackson to appear in one of their commercials to be the face of a young, hip Pepsi generation. Despite spending millions of dollars to land him in their ads, they did surprisingly little to keep him safe. Michael, one of the biggest stars in America at the time, was supposed to perform his hit Billie Jean while an array of pyrotechnics went off around him. But unbeknown to Michael Jackson, while all of these flames went off, something had gone very wrong. Michael's hair had caught a light. Unaware, Michael kept on dancing, even as his hair went up in flames. With his entire head ablaze, he had to be rushed to hospital and treated for burns. Pepsi got very lucky that the injuries weren't worse. But in a move that raised plenty of eyebrows, despite Michael nearly losing his life, they decided to air the advert anyway. The consequences for Michael Jackson were life-changing. Many people cite this incident as the reason why he got hooked on painkillers, an addiction that eventually killed him. But if you think that celebrities have been treated badly by Pepsi, just wait until you hear how they treat their employees. I'll get to that in a second. First, let's take a look at how they're slowly destroying our planet. Pepsi, as it turns out, is one of the world's biggest polluters. In fact, if you take the combined waste generated each year by Pepsi, Coca-Cola and Nestle, it comes out to about half a million tonnes of plastic, enough to cover 83 football fields every day. 
with pollution like that, it's no wonder there's currently a field of plastic, double the size of Texas, floating in the Pacific Ocean. For their role as being one of the world's biggest polluters, Pepsi was actually sued by an environmental group a couple of years ago because of the large amount of plastic waste that's washed up on California's shoreline. That, plus the false claims that they've made about their products being recyclable. At the time of recording this video, it remains to be seen whether they'll be held accountable for the damage that they've caused. In the meantime, they've had to face a number of other lawsuits. Most recently, they've been accused of underpaying their workers. It all started when Pepsi's timekeeping system went down for 10 weeks. That timekeeping system is a system that they use for keeping track of how much their employees have worked. Since Pepsi had no backup plan for handling this kind of situation, they decided to estimate what their workers were owed. It's probably no surprise to hear that what Pepsi paid fell far short of what the workers felt it should have been. But this is just a symptom of something we've been seeing again and again. Pepsi's complete negligence when it comes to the people affected by their decisions. In 2012, a court found that Pepsi had been using a criminal background check policy when hiring that fundamentally discriminated against African Americans. As part of the investigation, it was found that at least 300 African American applicants had been hurt by Pepsi's policy. Now, for once, in this case, Pepsi were made to pay compensation to the tune of $3.3 million. They were also made to implement new hiring practices. That was a rare victory against a company who has almost never been held accountable for the damage that they've caused. Whether it's their irresponsible promotions, their atrocious record of pollution, or their discrimination practices. Pepsi's history shows that behind the slick marketing, this is a company that can't be trusted. Next time you drink a Pepsi, at least you'll now know who you're dealing with. If you enjoyed this video and want to find out about another company that can't be trusted, check out this investigation next.